Hello and welcome to episode number 19 of the Lottie and Albert podcast. My name is Lindsay and I'm a crochet designer and editor from the Cotswolds in the UK and this is my podcast all about crochet and crafts. I'm going to be talking about finished objects of which I have some pretty momentous ones here. I'm also going to be talking about works in progress and new things. Again, there's a lot in the new things category too. I haven't podcast in a little while. Uh, if you are watching for the first time, a very warm welcome. I am Lottie and Albert everywhere across the internet, um, on Instagram, Etsy, Ravelry. There's also a Ravelry group for this podcast. Uh, if you'd like to head over and check that out in the groups tab on Ravelry. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I haven't podcasted in a little while, so I'm feeling a little bit unsure and I've filmed this a couple of times already. I can't seem to get into the motion today. So yeah, bear with me. Um, if you're a returning viewer of what I'm gonna talk about first up, uh, it's hopefully gonna be quite exciting. If it's the first time you're watching, bear with me. It's gonna be a little bit uh, rambling stuff with which is normal actually, that is normal. Um, but yeah, I've got three things to show you off the bat. Um, and they are the finished Little Hearts for Grace charity blankets, which is fairly momentous as far as I'm concerned, not least because it is the culmination of so many hours of stitching. I'm just gonna show you them while I'm talking um, from you guys, but also because they took me a lot longer to join than I had ever anticipated. So we started this cowl um, back in, this is folded, this is like a quarter of the first blanket. We started this cowl back in October, just little Jen and I had an idea to try and raise money for um, a charity that had, two charities, Brutestall Children's Hospital and Little Hearts Matter to help support a friend of ours and their little girl. I'm just trying to show you all of this one. This is blanket number one and this is all the purples and whites. I know that people are keen to see if their squares are in them, so I'll try and show you them, but I'll also take some some pictures because really, this is so hard. Um, yeah, to support two charities that had helped uh, a friend of ours and her little girl, Grace, who was born with half a heart and has recently undergone her third heart transplant in as many years. Uh, she's the same age as my daughter and Jen's son. And so we just felt like we really wanted to do something. Showing you these blankets is so hard to help support them. I think you might just have to wait for photos of the whole thing. It's blanket number one. It's all the purples and whites. This is blanket number two. We received over 300 squares and so we had enough for three blankets. This one is all the really amazing Jazzy Brights. Um, see if I can show you some of this one. I've got this one folded in half. Slightly easier. Here it is. Here it is. We had squares from eight designers who very kindly uh, gave their time for free and um, designed eight squares for us, which I then put up on my blog um, and invited people to make and send to us, which you did in your droves. Um, and this is the pastel one. Now, you may know if you have watched before, I have a bit of a thing for pastels. So I think this blanket has my, has my heart. Some of the yarns, like this one, I love this. I don't really know what it is, but I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, lots of people did sparkly ones. Can you see this? Does it sparkly? Um, and sequins sequiny ones just beautiful so many beautiful yarns and colors and squares I can't thank you all enough but yeah they took me so long to join I had hoped to have them joined by the end of February 
It's now uh, the 11th of March, it's Mother's Day if you're in the UK. Happy Mother's Day to any mums out there. Or happy Mother's Day to any of your mamas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so a little longer than I thought. And it has slightly taken over my life, this project. I'm so happy um, that they're joined. What we did in the end, because all the squares were slightly different, um, I joined them, we joined them into rows first. And then um, we joined them in rows, the rows all together. So you can see it's almost like a sort of brick effect. And I joined them using single crochet with the sort of ridge side on the front to make a kind of feature of the drawing. And I'm really happy with it. Um, on the border, I just kept it really simple because I feel like the squares are the main focus. I just wanted a little something to frame it that was slightly thicker than the join. So I did one row of half treble crochets, or half double crochets if you're in the US. And then I did um, what I call a modified crab stitch. So it's basically a crab stitch with a, a chain one and a miss one in between. So I'm gonna try and get some photos later today because I've got my mummy and my husband's mum coming over for lunch. And I need at least three people, one to hold each blanket. They're about, each one is about single bed size if you're in the UK. What do you call them in the US, Twi twins? I can't remember what you call them, anyway. Single bed size if you're in the UK. I feel a little bit overwhelmed that they're finished um, and that we can move on to the next stage and hopefully raise some money. Um, we've already raised about £250 just through donations that people have made while we've been making the blankets, which is really great. Now that the blankets are finished, we can move on to the next stage, which is raffling them locally. I am a bit gutted that we weren't able to do an online raffle. Everything I read said that we couldn't and that they're basically illegal in the UK. It comes under the gambling laws and I get it because, you know, if you could host an online raffle, every company would be fleecing us for our money and I'm sure there'd be some pretty dodgy scams and things going on out there but I did I did see an individual in the UK raffling a patchwork blanket for um a charity the other day and he'd raised something like 700 800 pounds in a couple of days and it felt really gutted because obviously they're raising money for their own charity and I'm happy that they have done that but oh like if I wasn't so much of a warrior or like do oh, I don't know like if we'd done that, we could have raised so much more money for the charity than we have done so far. But I need to be positive, right? There's still time, and I'm really hoping we can raise some more money. Locally, I'm just going to rope in lots of people and friends of friends to sell raffle tickets to all of their friends. And, yeah, I just cross my fingers. I just feel really, I suppose, quite a heavy weight of responsibility that so many hours have gone into making these blankets and so much love from so many places around the world, like, blows my mind. And just on the level of, you know, being in the crochet community, it was so exciting to see all those parcels come in and receive them and see all the beautiful squares and all the beautiful yarns. But really, the whole point of this was to try and raise money for charity. And I feel like I haven't raised very much yet. And I would really like to. <laughs> and then my husband was being really unhelpful and said, you know, he was saying, could you not have raised more money if you'd done like a 24 hour crochet and just got people to sponsor you? I was like, don't say that because I spent about, I don't, I don't know how many hours joining these blankets, but I spent a long time joining the blankets and people spent a long time making them. But there we go. There's still time. Somebody send me positive vibes because I have been feeling a little bit down. I'm one of those people who finds January, February quite hard sometimes. Well, every year, really, let's be honest. It's so dark and January I was doing really well and then the start of February hit and I just hit a little bit of a wall. I think I've taken on too much 
I'm trying to do too many things. I'm working almost full time. I have two small children. Always called about on the podcast. Realise this isn't a personal therapy session for me. I'm talking about crafts. But long and short of it is, I've had a little bit of a burnout and I just needed a bit of time to regroup and get some enthusiasm back. And the blankets are now finished, which is a huge achievement from all of us. And so that's not to be downplayed. And yeah, just send me good vibes for raising money in the next stage because I feel like I need it. I feel like I need it. Um, I'm going to move on, but I will definitely be taking photographs of those blankets. And also, somebody had the really good idea to um, create a Pinterest board because I was taking pictures of all the parcels as they arrived. Um, and I was trying to work out a way that I could share the pictures um, of all the parcels because I know some of you have been worrying if your squares got here or not. And we just, Jen and I, haven't had the capacity to um, contact everybody individually. So um, I thought that would also be a really fun way to see. Some people sent really fun packaging and notes and goodies. So it would be a really nice way for everybody to see. Um, and I'm really sorry, I can't remember who suggested the Pinterest board, but it was a really good idea. So um, I will definitely do that. Next up in finished objects, I have um, something to show you which I have made um, for my little girl. She turned four yesterday and she has been wearing a lot of my cowls. Um, I've got a few mustard uh, cowls that I've made. She likes to put them on and wear them and was asking for one for her. I think she said something along the lines of, uh, Mummy, will you make me uh, a scarf like yours? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course I will. Like, so flattered she'd ask. And she went, but don't take all night, Mummy. Because apparently she knows how long it takes me to finish things. So I've made her this little cowl. Um, I don't know how well you can see. It's in jasmine stitch, so it's supposed to look like little flowers. And I've made it in yellow, obviously, because yellow is her favourite colour. Pink has now entered the mix. She says pink and yellow are her two favourite colours. But yeah, yellow. Um, and I've made it out of a new yarn I was sent, quite helpfully. Oh gosh, it's caught underneath my board. Could be a disaster. Okay, the only trouble is the yarn label's now underneath the board too. I mean... It's not like I get any more professional as I podcast. Okay, I think we're all right. I sent some yarn by um, Hobbycraft, um, and it is called In the Zone by Knitcraft. This is what it looks like. And when I first got it, I was not really sure what to make of it. How well you can see. I have seen yarns like this before. I think that Katia have some big ones, and is it the Burnet, like Make a Big, are a bit like this. It's 100% um, polyester. But it's almost, rather than being a loose fibre or a brush fibre, it's like little tubes. Um, I think it's called Chainette or similar. I could really do with like a jazzy zoomy camera. I don't have one. I don't even think that's focusing. Um, yeah, it's like almost like little tubes. I thought they were filled with something to start off with, like a small amount of wadding or not, but I think actually it's just loose fibres. Oh, here we are, look. I'm like deconstructing it as we speak. Loose fibres inside. Can you see? Oh, look. It's fluffing up as I touch it. Um, and then they're surrounded by this like tube of chain chainette polyester. Oh look, how cool is that? But what it means is it's got a really great stitch definition, so it's quite like a cotton, but it's really light and so soft, very soft. I haven't been paid to say this. <laughs> this is a genuine opinion of mine. Um, and I just thought it would make a really good toddler make because, I mean, she's not like she's got a sensitive skin or anything, but some yarns 
can be quite um, harsh, particularly on the skin. And the softer yarns, the ones that are super soft, tend to be the ones that don't wash very well, like your alpacas or your um, merinos or, you know, like the really delicate fibres. And for a four-year-old who goes to nursery and rolls around in the mud, you don't really want something that you can't wash. So I thought polyester, it's soft, it's got really good stitch definition. That would make a really nice um, cowl. So this is what I've made. It was my first time doing jasmine stitch. It's actually basically a series of puff stitches worked in a certain way. So each row is a sort of half, half a flower and I really like the stitch. I think that I've seen some really beautiful projects online with this stitch and variegated yarn. It can have some quite interesting um, effects. My holes in the middle of my flowers are quite big. I'm not really sure that it's supposed to look like that, but Rosie was really pleased with it. Um, I wrapped it up and gave it to her and she wore it all day yesterday and wouldn't take it off. She also insisted on wearing her hat and her gloves even though um, it wasn't that cold. <laughs> but yeah, she was really happy with it and I was happy that she was happy. Obviously, that makes sense. I mean, anybody who has a toddler or has met a toddler <laughs> knows that they can often be quite fickle beings and quite honest in what they think. So yeah, to get praise is, is high praise from a toddler. And yeah, I definitely recommend checking out that yarn. Um, I think that it would make quite nice blankets too, like quite an unusual weight. And like I said, the sort of stitch definition of cotton, but the, um, a lot lighter than cotton. And it does say hand wash on the label, but it's 100% polyester. So I would put this um, through like a 30 cool cycle um, not too much spin or wire washing machine and I think touching it I'm fairly confident that it would survive that I feel like the hand wash element is over cautious <laughs> then I'm probably under cautious generally so yeah that's a that's another finished object I also have it's buried under all the blankets now um, another finished object to show you, which is this, I can't remember which way up it is now, um, fluffy number, I, um, made this cushion for issue 90 of Molly Makes Magazine, if you haven't watched before, um, I actually work for Molly Makes Magazine here in the UK, and, yeah, I commissioned myself to make this cushion, for a supplement in issue 90, which is our, our Boho Botanical supplement. And it's all about um, the really sort of natural um, trend that's going on for all things rattan and raffia. And we wanted a really sort of textured cushion to tie in with that. So um, I've made this in loop stitch in these sections and um, just, double crochet for these flat sections and then it's just got a double crochet back. Um, this is actually also a, a knit craft yarn. This is knit craft um, leader of the pack um, and yeah I'm a little bit in love with it. You haven't seen any uh, progress shots for this because it was a commission and so it was um, a secret project but I can show it you now that the magazine has gone on sale. It's just gone on sale if you would like to make one. Um, it's really a lot simpler than it looks. It's just worked in rows um, with this like simple colour change here and here. And yeah, just loop stitch. A little bit of love loop stitch. What else could I make in loop stitch? Um, for the moment, the pattern's only available through the magazine, but uh, I think in about six months' time, I will be able to release the pattern myself as well. Um, does it count when you commission yourself for a project for a magazine? <laughs> I was actually commissioned by Molly Makes uh, before I worked there and I was so excited and I'm obviously still excited to have my pattern featured in the magazine but I feel like maybe some of the magic has been lost because I chose myself.
to make the pattern <laughs> rather than anybody else choosing me based on my merit. But there we are, there's another fluffy number. Um, and last but not least, I have one more finished object. Actually, no, I've got two more finished objects. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if these count as a finished object. I made some hats for eggs. <laughs> now, there is method. I am like all in sunlight. There is method in my madness, sort of. Um, I was sent um, one of the new Karen, or three of the new Karen, Karen cotton cakes. So I'm sure lots of you will be familiar with Karen cakes. Well, these are a new cotton blend that um, are stocked by Hobbycraft. They're 60% cotton and 40% acrylic, and this is a 100 gram ball. This is the colorway Beach Glass. And they all come with a pattern that you can make. So I think on the inside of the label, here, there's a pattern on this one for a um, crochet granny shawl scarf by Look Fit. But uh, I was asked by Hobbycraft to do a quick make with these. And I thought that I would showcase the fact that you get five colors and obviously you can make a shawl or something continuous with this and you then get really fun color change but also what you get when you have a ball of yarn like this is five colors that go really well together you know if somebody else has already worked that out for you <laughs> they to they're totally really nice you've got lights and darks and good contrast so i decided i'd do a project where you split the ball out into the five colours and then make something with them. And I don't know, I wanted to do something a bit eastery and I thought little egg cozies would just be fun. So here they are in their little cases. I mean, there were six. I've eaten four of the eggs. I drew these little eyes on them. God, I'm gonna drop him and he's a raw egg. Um, I drew these little eyes on them. <laughs> for the photographs I took because I just thought they look cute um, and then when I came to eat the eggs because I mean waste not want not their little eyes were staring up at me from the bottom of the pan oh, sorry if there are any vegans watching this might be slightly upsetting for you <laughs> um, so yeah I made six little hats And I split up the colours, so for instance this hat's got the pale blue, um, the pale brown and the dark blue bubble. Uh, this has got the pale brown, the dark brown and the white bubble. Um, this hat's got the dark brown, the dark blue and a pale blue bubble. So yeah, as you can see, uh, I don't know where, <laughs> I know where four of the eggs have gone, I don't know where two of the hats have gone. I've lost them already. Uh, if you want to make cozies for your eggs, because who doesn't, the pattern is up on the Knitcraft blog and I'll link it below. And I will get around to putting up on my own blog too. Um, I made their little pom-poms with forks because I didn't have a pom-pom maker small enough. So I went old school and did little fork pom-poms. I mean, it's a bit of fun, right? But I did quite enjoy making them. And I do think they look quite cute. About 90% of the way through the project as I was making it, it did occur to me that probably not many people needed hats for their eggs, but let's not let that get in the way of a good craft, hey? Hats for eggs! Available now. <laughs> oh, um, I have one more thing to show you. This is going to require a lot of editing, this video. It's going to take me a long time. I have one more finished object to show you. Um, sorry if my camera's really wobbling. This was a little make. Um, it was a free gift in issue 87. 87 of Molly Makes, which came out just before Christmas. Um, and it is this Brin & Co embroidery kit, um, which says love, 
in a sort of negative space and then has all the stitching around the outside and yeah this was the free kit in issue 87 I think you can still get back issues if you suddenly see this and you're in love with it but I just thought it was really pretty and I hadn't done any embroidery in I'm sure I did a little bit growing up I remembered how to do French knots I seem to remember going on a workshop with my mum where we painted a scene and then embroidered things on it I think I painted like a garden and embroidered flowers um I've done a fair bit of cross stitch over the years but never really done an embroidery kit like this so this was really fun for me to make um and yeah I just need to like stitch down the fabric now or glue it or something um this is the back what do people call it the guts I think there's even a hashtag that's like show me your guts or something and it's like the back of the embroidery projects but yeah I I would say that this is really fun to me <laughs> what's wrong with me this is a really fun project to make I will definitely be looking out for some other fun embroidery projects in the future um it's nice to do something a bit different I gotta find a place to hang it now so my only slight issue is what do you do with them all? What do you do with all your embroidery projects? I guess you could just have like a feature wall with weaves and embroidery projects and things on. Hmm? Where do you hang yours? Let me know. Um, yeah, this is also one of the first issues I worked on at Molly, so that's really fun to, uh, I don't know if I shown you this one before. Oh look, there's a lovely um, embroidered constellation cushion from Chrissy Craft. And what else do we have in this issue? Oh, you probably don't want to know. You're probably not interested. Ooh, a tour of Jane Foster's home. Love it. So yeah, that's Bryn and Co. Uh, is the designer. Free gift, issue 87 of Molly Makes. And it's a finished object on my list. Is that enough finished objects for you? Three blankets, a cowl, a scarf, six hats for eggs even though I only had four to show you, and an embroidery. I mean, if I hadn't, it <laughs> wasn't for the fact that I haven't actually podcasted in about five weeks, it'd be really impressive, wouldn't it? I'm going to move on to works in progress, um, of which I have brought two to show you. One, which is in my bag my mum made me for Christmas. My project bag is my crochet between the lines cowl. There was actually a make along that started at the end of January for this. I've no idea if the make along is still going. I'm going to sneeze, sorry. Achoo! I don't know if the make along is still going. Um, I'm not even going to check because I probably am definitely not still in, in it. Taken me so long. The crochet between the lines shawl, if you haven't seen the pattern before, is um, a shawl pattern that is worked with two sheep sheepies um whirls. Trying to find the words to speak. Um, I went for the colours Love and Delicious and Blueberry Bam Bam. And I swapped these with some cotton cakes that I had in my stash with some lovely ladies online uh, with my hands, yarn shop and uh, the Stitchy Snail. I think that's her, Stitchery Snail, Stitchy Snail. Which I was quite pleased about because I started making it in a Karen cake in a cotton flowers and I just wasn't feeling it. So um, the two centres had quite a high contrast. As you can see, this started off dark purple and this started off white and I had maybe got to about here when I last spoke to you well I have put quite a bit on it I mean it might not look like it <laughs> but I put quite a bit on it I actually went to Iceland last weekend with my husband without children which was uh, my birthday present I'm turning 30 this month and so we went to Iceland for a long weekend, just the two of us, and I had, I, I couldn't take the big 
um, grace blankets. So for the first time in like months, I was able to work on something else. And I took this with me and I think from this stitch marker to here is what I did while I was in Iceland, which doesn't look that much, but these are, this is worked in um, US single crochet, UK double crochet. And these rows are quite long. Um, I'm not very good at maths. <laughs> I'm not gonna work it out, but it's. I think it's already, you know, like a heart up over a hundred stitches wide. So, to me, that felt like a lot, a lot of progress. And now I am starting to really see the color change. I mean, to look at it like this, it's maybe not as obvious, but when you hold the top up to the bottom, you can really see the colors changing. So I'm entering like a pale blue and a pale purple next to each other, which I think is gonna look really beautiful. So yeah, as you can see, started out in this high contrast and is now in um, sort of blues and purples. And I've shown you this shawl before if you've watched before, um, but it's just got this really cool, it's almost like an, an op art, um, like color change effect which does work on both sides and I just think like to look at it flat it's hard to see the stripes and then you just tilt it slightly and oh look it's all stripey it's so clever such a clever pattern um by oh gosh her Instagram name is Canada Dutch but I can't think of her name I'll put her name on the screen if I haven't already so yeah, that's my crochet between the lines shawl. I mean, to look at these cakes, I feel like there's still quite a lot on them. But uh, I'm free now from my blanket joining. So I can be putting uh, a couple of rows on this and I'm sure it will um, it will grow in no time. I actually, like I said, I was working on this on the plane. <laughs> I feel like it's always a win when they don't take your crochet hooks off you, particularly because we didn't take... Um, check-in luggage we just carry on and every time I get my crochet hooks through I'm like yes <laughs> whenever I fly it depends on the airline I guess has anybody ever had crochet hooks taken off them by an airline um I guess knitting needles are visibly sharper crochet hooks I think it'd be hard to do damage with crochet hooks but if you look online often they do say you can't take them so Took it on the plane, got my crochet hooks through, and um, two people complimented me on my projects. They said, oh, that knitting you're doing is beautiful. I just said, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't like to correct people and say, mm, actually, it's crochet. I feel like that's just a bit mean or rude. I'm sure it's, I'm sure somebody... Give me a nice way of correcting people. Like, le let me know how you correct people if you do. It's such a natural thing, isn't it? People just don't see crochet as much as knitting. Um, but then I'm like, there is only one hook. I'm not, anyway, anyway. It was very kind of them to compliment me. Uh, the second work in progress that I have to show you is a weave. I know. Um, I have done one weave before. I went to a workshop with my mum, um, gosh, probably 18 months ago um, in Bristol. It was with their lovely Peas and Needles, Lucy of Peas and Needles. And I really enjoyed it. And we were given a little loom, or I bought a little loom from her. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's a new craft. How am I going to have time to do it? I love crochet and weave it and then just never did another weave in 18 months. So I was inspired to do this. One of my colleagues um, had some of these gorgeous, I've got the box really helpfully far away, um, Mrs. Moon Yarns. I want to call it Flump. But that, I think I've just made that name up because they're a bit like Flumps. Uh, she had these gorgeous samples of lots of different colours of um, these really gorgeous Mrs Moon yarns. 
sat under her desk in a box and she sort of said, oh, I'm never going to do anything with these. Does anybody want them? And because I'm a massive graft holder, I said yes. But I was so inspired by these yarns, um, I immediately wanted to make something. And they are. And I went home and, and started this. So I did the sumac sections first. I'm really sorry about the light. Um, so if you can see, they look almost like little plaits, but they are not, they are just woven. I didn't have any warping thread, so I used this four ply yellow cotton uh, that I had in my stash. But actually, I think it looks quite fun where you can see a little bit of the yellow peeping through. And I kind of knew that I wanted the thicker yarn to be like pops of colour and a feature and then just to have a flat section. So I thought that I would try doing the Sumax first so I could kind of plan my colour placement and then do the white in the background. So this has been really fun. I, I started it a fair few weeks ago now. Um, and it's worked out quite quickly. I um, did have, this is part of the loom, a kind of shuttle, but I was finding it a bit big and ungainly. So what I've actually been using is just this little um, plastic needle, because it's quite a small loom, to weave in and out. And I've just been kind of, it's got such a big eye in it, this needle, I've been kind of doubling or tripling up the thread just kind of looping it back through so I can carry um, a bit more of the yarn and this is just a cotton I think it's the uh, Women's Institute cotton Aran in white but yeah I really love how I mean I've made mistakes and it's a bit slubby but I love it I really love this and I'm really enjoying it now that I finished the blanket <laughs> I'm hoping that this will be um, a finished object fairly soon and I'll have to Google how to get it off the loom because I can't remember. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I obviously have other finished of other works in progress, lots of other works in progress, but um, that's my main one. I also really want to make a start now on my um, Sensum sweater by Eleven Handmade. So that's going to be next up. Uh, last but not least, I have some new things to show you. Now, I mentioned that I went to Iceland. And so I obviously had to buy some souvenir yarn. And I knew that Iceland was quite a woolly capital. Obviously, it's cold there. Um, their summers don't get much over 10 degrees Celsius. And their winters are cool. And let me tell you, the wind chill in Iceland is real. It's very cold there. And so yeah, they've got a long history of um, knitting and knitted jumpers in particular. And it's quite a big part of their um, tourist market now, actually. There are centers that sell the traditional style I mean, to me, they're very similar to the, the sort of Fair Isle um, knitting that you get in Scotland. Um, or, oh, that's, it's a particular location, isn't it? Anyway, I'll put some pictures in. So, um, I bought some wool, and it is wool. It's very woolly wool. It's not soft, it's like the absolute opposite to this kind of like soft polyester this is this is like a real man's wool um <laughs> it's 50 gram balls i'm trying to see if it actually has a it's got the wool mark on it I'm trying to see if it's got any other fibers in it but i can't even see I think that I'm not reading it right. It says use a four to five millimeter hook. I'd say it's DK, maybe slightly thicker. Well, it is just pure new wool. Icelandic wool, a sign of quality. Um, I'm not going to try and butcher this. Loppy, lit, lit loppy, 
I bought these two colours. I nearly bought a white and a black or a white and a dark grey because that's the kind of traditional two colours. I guess because they're the undyed uh, natural colours that you get from wool, white and black, black sheep and white sheep. Um, but I couldn't quite bring myself to to just stick to the white and the black. So I went for white and pink. And um, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet. Maybe some mittens, because I feel like this would be okay on my hands. It's not, you know, it's not actually too bad. It's, it's got, I kind of <laughs> just rub it across my neck. Do you know what I say when I say it? it's harsh, but it's not itchy? You can feel that it's wool, but it's not, it wouldn't irritate. I wouldn't want to go on like a long walk with it rubbing. <laughs> but it's gorgeous and I could not buy it. So I bought two balls of that and I also bought two balls of um, this other brand. I mean, I can't even, Mo Mosa mm, something. And this is 66% alpaca and 34% Icelandic wool. And this calls for a 4.5 to 5 millimeter needles. I got this really beautiful um, mild kind of white and beige, and also white and purple. And I thought they would make a really beautiful hat. And so I started swatching the night I got back in a little bit of a frenzy. <laughs> and I was just swatching, 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 swatching. I probably used like half of the balls of wool just swatching to try and find a nice um, mix. I kind of had this idea that I wanted it to look a bit like knitting and so I was trying to to find stitches where I could get the same effect in crochet. I should probably just try and knit a hat. Maybe I'll do that. Um, and also try and frog. It's probably gonna frog very well where I've just used half a ball in kind of slightly manic swatching. I just, but how beautiful are these colors together? They are so nice. There was a really bold kind of pink and red that I nearly bought. And then actually I just thought no, because I would really wear these colors as a hat or something. I feel these are really calm colors and yeah, I just really like them. So that's my Icelandic wool that I'm gonna try and make something with. Uh, there's a really gorgeous <coughs> mitten pattern, which is crochet by um, Vicky Brown. I don't know if I'll have enough, but um, I might try and make those with that. I might even mm, start those today. It's still a little bit cold here in the UK. As you can see, it's quite sunny here today and Iceland was freezing. I really recommend Iceland if you've never been or if you're thinking of going. It's very expensive compared to the UK. It's like £9 for a sandwich in a supermarket and around £10 for a pint of beer. Sort of £12 for a glass of wine. Um, maybe some people are paying those prices in London, but... Uh, yeah, it was quite expensive, which we did know before we went, but um, yeah, just be aware <laughs> if you're thinking of going, it's very expensive. But the scenery was just stunning and all the people were so friendly, it was a really nice place to go and just as you'd expect from Scandinavian country, um, a real emphasis on design and nothing was tacky, like it did feel, I know they've had a massive influx of tourists, I think it was something... Like they, I was reading in the book that in um, 2003 they had an average of like 300,000 visitors a year and I think 2017 it was something like 1.3 million visitors, tourists um, a year. So that's a real massive increase and I guess maybe just um, because of, you can get such cheap short haul flights with cheap um, um, air lines god i can't even find words for airlines um airlines now and uh we went on a tour to see the northern lights which we did see which is amazing um we actually went out the first night um by ourselves to try and 
find them, which didn't really work. So the next night we paid to go on a tour and the tour guide was great, but she was giving, she was chatting to us whilst we were on this coach. And she said, it's quite funny, there was um, a writer or a poet, I think, he, who used to joke and say, oh, you know, um, we should sell the Northern Lights to tourists to try and get them to come. And that is now what basically is happening. Um, the appeal of the Northern Lights and the, you know, seeing them is, is pretty strong. And obviously some people do go to Iceland just um, for the chance of seeing it. It's quite an accessible place, you know, to get to. And you've got quite a high chance of seeing the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, Borealis. We saw them, they weren't super strong. I was kicking myself because I didn't research much before I went. I didn't take my DSLR, I just took my phone. Problem number one, iPhones in cold conditions just die. They just die, the battery just drains and they just die. So that was annoying the whole weekend. And problem number two, apparently cameras are up to 50 times more sensitive seeing Northern Lights than the naked eye. The Northern Lights looked white to my eye. You could see there was a luminescence. I could see the really beautiful, you know, almost curtain effect, but it looked it looked white, maybe a really faint green tinge, but not certainly not like the pictures you see. But I think when we saw them, they were only like a two out of nine on the scale of activity. So perhaps if you're there and you see the nine, you can see the colours and the flashes with the naked eye, but cameras can pick it up really well. So people around us were taking pictures and the pictures that were coming out were stunning, like big green um, curtains of light. I didn't take my camera because I'm an idiot. Um, because I was like, oh, it's really big and heavy and bulky and we've got to carry on and take your camera, people, and you'll get much better photos. Uh... A couple more new things. I actually left my old job last October, but I um, recently caught up with one of my old colleagues who I'm very friendly with, and she brought me my leaving present, which I hadn't gotten around to um, picking up from anyone or, or being given. And it is this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. It's got no band. I don't know where it's from. I think one of our other colleagues got it on Etsy. Do you know, it almost looks like it's hand spun because can you see it's quite like, thick and thin. There's some really beautiful, I don't think you can see in this light, like blue stellina or something going through it, some blue sparkle. Um, maybe you can see better in the, in the sun. Oh, so now I want the sun, I can't find it. Can you see, can you see the sparkle? It's really hard. Um, but isn't this stunning? Now I'm looking at it, it's quite similar to my Icelandic yarn I bought. <laughs> Maybe I could put them together in something. Um, but yeah, it's stunning. It's such a beautiful present. And I also had a hook, which I've misplaced, which is a five mil, and I'm pretty sure it's from Pedro's Plax, but the yarn I don't recognise. So if anybody's looking at this and they think they've bought it or seen it, Maybe they can point me in the direction of the Etsy shop it came from and I can give it a shout out. Or, you know, I I don't know. How do I tell if it's hand spun or not? Do you think it is? I feel like it could be. I feel like it could be. It's Anyway, it's beautiful. Whatever it is, it's beautiful. I um, don't know what to make with it yet, but, oh, look, it's quite nicely with my top. Last but not least, this is going to be a long podcast, I... Um, have been sent some yarn by the fibre company which was really exciting uh, because I haven't worked with them or used their yarn before um, and they sent me an email about a new colourways um, in their Luma yarn and I was really intrigued because they didn't tell me the um, different weightings but they said it was wool, cotton, linen and silk which I've never worked with a yarn like that before uh, so I said, yes, please. I would love to try some of your wool, cotton, silk and linen yarn because I was fascinated by what that would be like. Um, now it's arrived. It's more, I'd say it's more like a cotton than it is a wool, if that makes sense. It feels more like a cotton and maybe like the, maybe slightly lighter than a cotton. Um, this is DK weight. 
but you kind of really feel that there's a silk element to it. It's really interesting. I was kind of imagining something that was going to come and be really silky, but just with maybe like that crisper definition of cotton. I'd say it's more of a, like a cotton with a softness. It's really beautiful. Um, I actually was watching the Lulu Loves podcast this week and I saw that she had been offered some too. And I was like, oh no, am I just going to be like talking about exactly the same thing? But what I thought was really interesting was she'd gone for completely different colours. She'd gone for sort of um, whites and like moss green. And I um, went for red and red and pink and green. I think these two look really beautiful together. This one's called Flamingo, which I went for just partly because of the name. Online it did look like a brighter pink. I see it's more like a salmony orangey pink, but it does look really nice with this green. This green is called Seal, C-I-E-L. Um, <laughs> and I went for this one, not because it goes, but just because it's pillar box red. And I have, I saw, <coughs> no way crochet. <coughs> Excuse me. Made the most beautiful jumper in pillar box red. Um, I think it was WI cotton. Um, and I've just, yeah, been slightly obsessed with the colour ever since. So I don't know what I could have made with this one ball of pillar box red. But this is the Zinnia colourway. Um, and then I also went for this red, which is the, oh, actually, look, I've put both labels on here. One of these is grenadine and one of these is zinnia. I've got a feeling that this is grenadine and this is zinnia. They're both red, but this one is, mu is more of a subtle sort of mix, a bit of a f like lighter fleck in it. Whereas this one is just bright post box, pillar box red. Um, I have got a pattern. I mean, you can see that I've caked this one up. <laughs> this is going to starting something. Um, I've got a pattern um, from Novel Snob. Um, that's her Instagram name. I can't remember her actual name. I'm so sorry. For a um, head ear warmer, what's it even called? I've just lost all my words. I'll put a picture of it in here, which I thought would be really beautiful in this colour. And yeah, oh, somebody send me some suggestions for what I can make with 50 grams of this red. It's just so beautiful. Maybe that could be another hat. Or oh, I did think that these three could look quite cool together. It's like a kind of ombre. But then also these two just go so nicely together. Well, maybe. I did see that Lulu uh, Loves is giving one away, Emma. Um, I've lost it at the end, folks. I did see that in the Lulu That Loves podcast, she's put one of hers in for a giveaway. <laughs> which now makes me feel like I should put one of mine in a giveaway. But I do have a book giveaway coming up next podcast. So, possibly... Possibly uh, one of these will get included too. <laughs> Unless I find something I want to make, which is also quite likely. Um, so yeah, that's all my that's all my new stuff. This yarn, definitely re recommend checking out. It's the Fibre Company, as I said. Um, yeah, and again, I, I'm like, I'm going to make something with it now, straight away, because I finished the charity blankets. I always really overestimate how much time I have. Always. I try and fit far too much in. I've already said about three different things I want to make in the course of this podcast. We'll see. We'll see if I do actually do any of them. Um, but yeah, that's some of new things for now. I've definitely got other things in the post on the way that I'll have to share with you next time. Thank you so much if you've made it to the end of this very waffly rambly podcast. Goodness knows how long it's going to take me to edit it because there have been a lot of bloopers. There have been a lot of me forgetting words, basic things, things falling down on me, me basically getting like depressed over the blankets, which nobody wants to watch, so I'll take that bit out. Um, but I, hopefully you've enjoyed something that you have seen. If you want to give me a thumbs up um, or subscribe, 
for more quality content in the future um or yeah leave me a comment uh you know i love reading your comments so then then that would be much much appreciated and i will see you all again in two weeks time uh for another podcast speak soon and have a lovely crafty two weeks bye bye Oh, my God.